absolute max and min for a function using calculus and finding the derivative. Make sure that you subscribe and share with another friend taking calculus. This video is all about absolute max and min. If you're not sure how to do a number line analysis or figure out if a function is increasing or decreasing, make sure you check out my other video where I explain all of that information. Now, let's jump into absolute max and mins. So for this function, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is take the derivative. So f prime of x equals eight minus two x. Set it equal to zero, eight minus two x. And then we can quickly solve and find that x is gonna equal four. So four is gonna be on our number line analysis because that's where the first derivative equals zero. We're also gonna include zero and six because that is the interval that this problem is asking for. So in our number line analysis here, we have four is a zero of the first derivative. And then they want this interval between zero and six. So that's how I'm identifying those on my number line analysis. The next thing we need to do is get the first derivative and figure out where is the function increasing and decreasing. All right, our first derivative was eight minus two x. If we plug in a number between zero and four, let's see what we get. Let's plug in one because it's easy. So eight minus two would be six, that's a positive. So this guy's gonna be positive. And now let's pick number five, let's put five in. So eight minus 10, if we plug five in for x, is gonna be a negative, so this is gonna be negative. So our function, we can see, is gonna be increasing until four and then decreasing after four. So we obviously have our x value for our absolute max. It's when x equals four. However, when they're asking for an absolute max, they want the y value. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So our max is going to be at x equals 4, but we need to find his y partner. So we have to plug it into the original equation. And our original equation was f of x equals 8x minus x squared. So we plug in 4 and you'll have eight times four, which is 32, minus four squared, which is 16, which gives you an answer of 16. So your max value is when x equals four and y equals 16. That's your absolute max. Now let's find your absolute min. If you look back up at the number line analysis, it can either bottom out when x is zero or x is six, because that's the interval it gave us. So we're gonna plug both zero and six into our original function to find out where the absolute min will be. So to find the min, our options are x equals zero or x equals six. And again, our function that we're gonna plug them into is the original function. Well, this is easy. When you plug in zero, you get zero. So you've got zero and zero is one of your options. Then if you plug in f of six, you're gonna get eight times six, that's 48, minus six squared, which is 36. 48 minus 36, which is 12. Well, if you look at your options, which one is smaller? Zero or 12? Zero. So this then right here would be your absolute min values. X is zero, your Y is also zero. Okay, let's try another one. Again, trying to find our absolute max and min values. So what we need to do is find the first derivative. So f prime of x equals, this would be 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. Now we set it equal to zero, and I'm going to pull out a six, and then we'll be left with six or x squared minus x minus two. So our options are zero equals six, which doesn't work obviously, and zero equals x squared minus x minus two. Guess what we get to do? We get to factor. One of these has gotta be negative, one of these has gotta be positive. All right, what numbers multiply together to give you two and add to give you a negative one? Well, I'm gonna say a negative two 
and a positive one. So now we have zero equals x minus two, so x equals two is an option, or we have x plus one equals zero, so x equals negative one. So those are the numbers that are gonna go on our number line analysis. Along with the interval values they gave us in the original problem to find absolute maximum. So for our number line analysis, we have a negative one as a zero, we have two as a zero, and then the interval values they wanted us to do is negative two and three. Notice I write them differently on the number line analysis so I know which ones are the zeros and which ones are the intervals they want us to evaluate. So we have to plug all of these values into our derivative. So our derivative was six x squared minus six x minus 12. Now what we need to do is find out where this function is increasing and decreasing, and then find the y partners to find who's our absolute maximum. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do here is plug in zero, and I'm gonna do the middle interval because it's easy. So if I plug in a zero to these, these all drop and I'm left with a negative 12. So this piece is gonna be negative. And now, usually it alternates, but not always. But you can go ahead and check, and if you plug in a negative half to this in this function right here, you can go ahead and plug in your calculator or do the algebra, you're gonna see that you're gonna get a positive value on this side. And then if we plug in a number greater than two, now technically they only want us to go to three, but if you plug in a number greater than two and you square it and then subtract these, this piece is still gonna be bigger. Well, this will be a positive value. Again, if you want to, you can plug in this function into your calculator with a, a positive number. You can put in like 2.5 to see that it, you will turn out with a positive answer. So our function is increasing till negative one, decreasing till two, and increasing after two. So now what we need to do is because we have multiple max and min points, right? Here's an, an opportunity for a min, here's an opportunity for a max, here's an opportunity for a min, and the last one's an opportunity for a max. So we need to find out all of their y partners because that's fun. Here we go. So I'm gonna put the function over here. This is our original function. Remember, to find the y values, you need the original function, which was two x cubed minus three x squared minus 12 x. And we need to find it for f of negative two. We need to find it for f of negative one. We need to find it for f of two and for f of three. At this point, it's all algebra. We're just gonna stick in those x values and find their y value partners. Once you do all the algebra and you see the x, y values, it's very easy to pick out the absolute max and the absolute min. The absolute max is gonna have the highest y value. So your absolute max is gonna be this guy. The lowest y value will be your absolute min. So you've got this guy right here who's gonna be your absolute min and then you're done. Let's do one more because everybody loves trig, right? Okay, maybe not, but there's always a trig problem that your teacher or your book will ask you to do, so here we go. First step, find the derivative. So the derivative of this function, derivative of sine is cosine of x, derivative of cosine is negative sine, so this is gonna be plus sine x. Now we set this function equal to zero. So basically at this point, you need to know when they have the same value, but one of them is the negative of each other, right? So it's like if you had six minus six, which X values are sine and cosine the same? And hopefully light bulbs go off in your head and you're thinking pi over four. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a circle over here. And draw our, we're doing from zero to pi, right? This is the interval that they gave us to deal with. And we know that over here at pi over four, this is our one, one square root of two. And this is a positive X and a positive Y. So they would both be positive and that's not gonna work there. But if we come over on this side at three pi over four, we have a negative one, a positive one and a square root of two. So if we do cosine 
at 3 pi over 4 plus sine at 3 pi over 4. Here, you're going to have negative 1 over the square root of 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2, which does equal 0. So your x value at 3 pi over 4 is where your derivative equals 0, which means it is one of your critical points. Let's put that on our number line analysis. So our number line analysis is going to contain the interval values, which they want us to have. And it is also going to contain our critical point where the derivative equals 0. Now we have to figure out if this guy is going to be positive or negative in these intervals. Okay, so let's look back at our graph. If we look at the interval between 0 and 3 pi over 4, we have to figure out if this guy's going to be positive or negative. So I'm going to look in the first quadrant here. If we add those two together, that is all going to be positive because the x values, again, for the most part, but these are going to be smaller x values that they won't cancel out the bigger cosine x being negative. Okay? Now when we look at the interval in this area and we're looking at values that are going to be between 3 pi over 4 and pi, that's where your cosine x values are going to start to be more negative and they're going to be bigger, which is going to make this side negative. So it's going to be increasing until 3 pi over 4 and decreasing until pi. We already know our absolute max, right? Because there's only one peak in this. But now you just have to figure out his y partner. And then you have to evaluate 0 and pi to find out your mins. And to do that, we go back to the original equation. So our original function was sine x minus cosine x. And we need to figure that out at 3 pi over 4. Now, this was our only max x value, but we need to know the y value to find how high it goes. So we have sine at 3 pi over 4 minus cosine at 3 pi over 4. And lucky for us, we just recently figured these out. This was 1 over the square root of 2. And cosine was actually negative 1 over the square root of 2, makes it that's a positive. So this is 2 over the square root of 2. So that's your max point. I'll put that in an ordered pair here for you. The next part you need to do is find out which one of these points is going to be your absolute min. Go over to our graph. Here we have our zero point and here is pi. This ordered pair is one comma zero. This one is negative one comma zero. Your cosine is your x, your sine is your y value. So if we come over here and plug in f of zero, sine is zero minus 1, this is a negative 1, and then if we do f of pi, sine of 0 again is 0, minus a negative 1 gives us a positive 1, which means your min point will be at f of 0 with your y value being negative 1. Again, if you have more questions about number line analysis, increasing, decreasing, or concavity, make sure to check out my other video that goes through all of that information. Be sure to subscribe and share this video with another friend in calculus. Do math, Aaron, do math. Or so, blah, 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 blah.